now that we have a pretty good sense of how to use the basic shading solver tools here to calculate our shading dimensions, the sort of, um, you know, old-fashioned or um, um, uh, older version of um, doing the PHPP calculation, uh, shading calculations, let's, um, let's turn our attention now to an alternate method using some of the new ladybug tools, uh, uh, native solvers and see if we can't figure out a, another method for calculating shading shading values shading reduction values that might um, that might might uh, harness the uh, power of those new ladybug tools the speed and flexibility the ability to model larger scenes more complex scenes scenes with more detail um, and of course doing everything uh, much more quickly as well so I'm going to show an, an alternate method. Um, so I've got you know our, our rhino scene here on the left and our grasshopper scene here. So let me uh, open up our grasshopper scene a little more. And um, so we have so far, as we've seen in our last couple of videos, been working in this uh, this shading method here. So we've got this one shading method that works just fine, and we could choose to use this if we want. But I'm going to show a whole another, a whole different method that we could choose to use um, if we if we like. And some of it is going to be similar, uh, and then some of it is going to be quite different um, than uh, than some of our other work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, just turn this off. I'm going to disable all of these elements so that um, so that these are no longer calculating and we'll go ahead and calculate some of our, our new uh, our uh, uh, results using some of our new tools here. So I'm in Grasshopper, I'm in my shading section here and if I go up into the Passivouse Tools ribbon and come into the 01 model section and come down into the shading section which is the fourth section here you'll notice that we've used most of a couple of these tools now we, we used our calculate window shading factors simple and we use this create window reveals obviously to create the geometry around our uh, around our windows to calculate the self shading due to the the window it's uh, the uh, envelope elements themselves uh, but now what I want to do is turn our attention to this one this component here this ladybug tools um, generate uh, ladybug tools seasonal radiation. Uh, so this component here is going to be uh, we're going to use this component in order to um, to create or calculate radiation levels on a seasonal basis for our windows and we can then use that radiation those radiation values in order to calculate shading factors. If we're able to calculate total radiation with shading and then calculate total radiation with no shading we can easily calculate a shading factor if we have both of those results so this component here is going to take advantage of some of the new ladybug tools version 1.0 functionality so as with everything else here you're going to need to have the ladybug tools uh, installed and working correctly for for this uh, component to work so let me grab this and drop this onto the canvas, and you'll notice this is a, this is a larger component. There's going to be a lot of pieces that we're going to need to input here. Uh, before we get into the details here, let's just very briefly, let me come up here to my Ladybug rollout. And in Ladybug, um, first of all, I just want to highlight, so in uh, 03, Analyze Geometry, there's this Ladybug Incident Radiation. Um, the uh, specific radiation calculations that the... Um, that the Passivouse Tools component here is going to, is going to do um, are going to mimic in, in a very close fashion the Ladybug Incident Radiation component. So in fact we're going to use a lot of the uh, methods and um, calculation procedures that this uh, LB Incident Radiation component uses. So um, um, if you're interested, if you want to, every, I should note, everything that this component does could be done, uh, what do you want to say, longhand, um, sort of um, um, in detail, using this component right here. Uh, so you could absolutely get all the same results by just using this component here. This, compo this um, component is just going to do it sort of faster in a more uh, sort of standardized manner. Um, or uh, maybe, I uh, let's say it that way. Um, so, okay, what are we going to need here to take in? So we're taking in all sorts of stuff, and then we're kicking out all sorts of stuff. So we'll go through this sort of carefully one, one piece at a time. And as I said, this, this calculation, this solver is going to be used to do more detailed, faster, more accurate, probably, uh, shading factors for your, for your building. Uh, okay, so we're, let's start with the top here. We're going to take in 
a winter sky matrix and a summer sky matrix. What is a sky matrix? Well, if you're not familiar, if you're in Ladybug here, um, we um, have the ability to calculate these uh, sky matrices um, as part of the ladybug tools, and these are uh, used in order to in order to calculate some of this radiation uh, geometry. So we're going to have to input some of these um, sky matrices, one for the winter period and another for the summer period, in order to calculate these PHPP results. So we'll look at that. Um, some, sh some mesh shading parameters. We have some options here, some more options for the size of the analysis grid that we're going to use, uh, the honeybee rooms themselves. So the actual honeybee rooms, just like all of our other components, are going to get taken in here. And then we've got a whole bunch of other elements down below, the names of all the windows, the window surfaces themselves, the window surround geometry, just like we looked at in the last component, um, the envelope surfaces punched, just like we looked at in the last component, and the additional shading surfaces, just like in the last component. So all of that is going to be very similar to our previous workflow. And then down on the bottom here, we have the ability to run the, run the um, component. Notice here that it does also have an option for parallel, meaning um, because this solver can often take a lot of system resources and a lot of time to run, we, um, uh, the Ladybug folks have given us the ability to run using multiple CPUs, uh, which, can, which can, in certain circumstances, speed up the calculation significantly. Uh, it doesn't always speed it up. There is some sort of computational overhead associated with distributing calculations out across your various CPUs. But in most situations, especially anything more than you know, pretty small, lightweight, scenes um, would benefit from this uh, parallel computation. Um, so we can set that to true if we want, but we don't have to. We can um, uh, 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 certainly uh, leave it off if we, um, if, we, if we don't feel like we need that. So OK, let's, um, let's set this up. Let's uh, get some input here. So first of all, uh, let's notice that we do need the window surrounds, the window surfaces punched, and the additional shading surfaces, window names, window surfaces. So that stuff is still going to come, let me go back to my Passivos Tools 01 model, from our Create Window Reveals. So just like before, we can use, we can reuse the same component here, this Create Window Reveals. The only thing this component does is create geometry. And that can get used in our uh, simplified numerical solver or in this more complicated radiation solver. So I'm going to put that onto the canvas here. And we're going to uh, use that to create our window reveal geometry, just like we did before. So all it needs is this honeybee rooms. And so I'm going to take our honeybee rooms, and I'm going to branch that down over here. So again, we're going to build a whole parallel sort of parallel stream of calculation um, that'll, that'll sort of skip around that, uh, this, this guy here. All right, so we've got our honeybee rooms in, and that's, of course, going to generate all of our geometry here for the window surrounds and the envelope surfaces punched. And notice that almost everything here is going to line up sort of one-to-one. -one. So honeybee rooms, go to honeybee rooms, window names, go to window names, window surfaces, go to window surfaces, window surrounds, go to window surrounds, envelope surfaces punched, go to envelope surfaces punched, and there we go. All right, so that's a good start. Uh, we could also, of course, uh, hook up a Boolean toggle to the run it here. So we'll use that when it comes time to turn this on. And as always, let me just uh, style it consistently. So we'll turn that on when we're ready to run. But we are not ready to run yet. Uh, what do we say here? Please set to run to true in order to calculate. Well, yeah, we could, but we're not going to get any results because we have not given this enough data yet. So what else do we need to input? Well, we need to input this winter sky matrix and summer sky matrix. So these are two really important settings that this radiation solver needs in addition to all the geometry. So we did input all the geometry, but we also need to put the environment. So let's input or let's create and then let's input a winter sky matrix and a summer sky matrix. And to do that, we're just going to use native ladybug tools. So I'm going to come over here to ladybug. We're going to come down to the visualize data, and we're going to use this ladybug cumulative sky matrix component. And let me drop that onto the grid here, or onto the canvas here. And so we're going to need to create one here, which is going to be uh, for our, our winter. And then we're going to create another one, which will be for our summer. So let's create our winter one first. Let's take a look at what we get by default here. I think we get nothing there. So input. 
yeah, so we need to input a whole bunch of information here um, about the location, the direct radiation, the diffuse radiation, and then what our analysis period is that we want to um, perform the calculation over. If we're going to generate a winter sky matrix, the winter period is going to be roughly November to, um, you know, late April uh, kind of thing. So we can put in an analysis period here. Obviously, that would be different in different climates. Uh, but for a place like New York, that would be sort of the winter, the winter season, as it were. All right, well, let's start with the first ones here. Where are we going to get this? Where's, where are we going to get this um, top level information? Well, that is actually going to come from our EPW file. So let me do this. So up here, we had our EPW file. Remember, we downloaded that in the last um, uh, component. So let me um, pull that out of the group and let me pull that down into this portion. We'll try and keep this tidy. This is a big definition and there's a lot of pieces here, so it can become a bit of a mess, but we'll do our best. So we're bringing in our EPW file and we're, we actually don't need, hmm, what do we not need? I guess these can actually, I don't need these guys. So these can actually stay up here. And what I actually need are is the direct and diffuse radiation. So to get those, I actually need to come over here to my, I mean my ladybug tools, come over to import, and I need to um, import the EPW file. And this component is going to sort of read and analyze the EPW file. Obviously, it's a big one. So we download the EPW file, it gets opened up, and notice we have a whole bunch of information here, things like location. So I can connect location to location on the sky matrix. Uh, what else? Direct radiation, direct normal radiation. There we go. Radiation to radiation. Diffuse radiation, diffuse horizontal radiation, radiation to radiation. There we go. And so now this is in a good place. The last thing that we need to do here is just designate an analysis period. So we're going to set the hours of the year here for our sky matrix. And let me pull these all sort of over there for a minute. And I'll try and keep this under control to keep the spaghetti under control. Let me let me just go ahead and disconnect this from the one above. We can we can add that back in if we want to go back and use our our old-fashioned solver ever again. That's fine. Okay, uh, let's add an analysis period. So I'm in Ladybug again. Come into an analyze data, and here we want to build an analysis period. So we could do that in a couple different ways, but I'm going to use this analysis period component. Drop that onto the canvas, and this is pretty straightforward. It just asks us, what do we want the start month of the period to be? What do we want the end month, start day, end day, start hour, end hour, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's say that we want to go from uh, from what uh, November. I say November first. That seems about right. So let's say November first. And we want to go until the last day of, let's say, April. And so there we go. And by default, I believe it goes, let's check. I believe it goes through the 30th. So we can take, take the dates here. Yeah, it goes through the 30th of April. So about 4,000 hours, you know, half the year. Maybe not all of April falls in. Maybe we would say, let's only go to the 15th of April. I mean, you can sort of decide what you would consider the winter period there. Um, so there we go, November 1st to the 15th of April. All right, so there's our analysis period. And to apply that to the sky matrix, all we have to do is take the hours of the year here and drop hours of year into the hours of the year. And that's going to um, truncate or uh, customize this sky matrix. And it's going to be a sky matrix, which is going to be uh, dialed in to just the time period that we um, that we are interested in. So that's good. So that's working. If we wanted to, um, if we wanted to see this, we could of course come up to Ladybug and go to Visualize Data, and we could just drop a quick sky dome onto the canvas, take the sky matrix and plug that in, and um, go back to our Rhino scene. And there's our winter. There's our winter time sky matrix. You can see uh, relatively coarse. I mean, we could, we can, of course, come in and change the density, right? We could change the density um, if we, you know, by the time we get everything all rigged up, maybe we set it up to high, high resolution so that we get a, a better result in the end. But let's get everything configured using a kind of moderate density here. And you can see, you know, more low 
wintertime sun, right? This is a winter sky matrix, um, sky dome illustration here. So what we're seeing is that there's a lot of low angle wintertime sun, just as you would imagine, right? This is a description of what the uh, radiation in the sky dome looks like over the winter period in a place like New York in the northern hemisphere. So sure, okay, that seems about right. Uh, so that's our winter sky matrix. Let me delete that. And what are we going to do with that winter sky matrix? Well, we're going to input it here into our winter sky matrix input. So the winter sky matrix goes to the winter sky matrix. Now we kind of have to do all of that all over again with the summer sky matrix. So we actually need two, because of the way PHPP works, it wants seasonal shading factors. So we have to do this all twice. So I'm going to make a copy of my sky matrix here, sort of pull it down. Maybe we'll do it this way. And now we need a different analysis period. So we need a summertime analysis period. So the summertime analysis period is going to go from, so I just made a copy of the analysis period. Let's say it goes from the 1st of May until, um, until what? The, like, I guess the last day of October? Let's say the last day of September, something like that. That's our summer period. And so I'm going to apply those hours of the year to this second sky matrix. So the first sky matrix is the winter time, and the second sky matrix is the summer time. So they're looking at different hours of the year, different chunks of the year. And we could, of course, come up here to visualize data, go to our sky dome, and visualize the summertime sky matrix. And notice that it looks quite different than the wintertime sky matrix, doesn't it? A lot more high angle sun. Obviously, during the summer period, the, high, the sun is going to be much, much higher in the sky uh, in a place like New York in the uh, northern hemisphere, uh, latitude around 40 degrees. So OK, fine. And so we've got a wintertime sky matrix and a summertime sky matrix. And let's feed the summertime sky matrix into the summertime sky matrix. So we now have all of the uh, input data that we need for this guy to run. And as the uh, tool says here, all we should have to do now is set this to true in order for this to go off and run. So we set it to true. And notice that this solves a lot faster um, than the other. And it's going to make heavy use of the ladybug tools. Um, and um, there we go. So now we have our radiation values for our project. Uh, what has happened? What have we What have we done here? Well, let me do it this way. Let me turn these off. Let me turn off geometry. Turn the, let me turn all this off. We don't need to see any of this stuff. Um, okay. So what do we have here? So we have our honeybee rooms. We have our window names. Our window radiation. Let me um, just so we can see what we're talking about here. Let me uh, visualize. So there's our building. And um, if we want to, we can actually visualize the results. And what are the results? Well, we have our honeybee rooms. We have our window names. And then we have a whole bunch of radiation information. So what we've gotten, what this tool has done, is gone off and calculated wintertime radiation for all the windows with all the shading, wintertime radiation for all the windows without any shading, summertime radiation for all the windows with all the shading, and summertime radiation for all the windows without the radiation. And if we want to see what that looks like, what kind of results we get, I can just take a mesh and drop it here onto, for instance, winter, uh, winter radiation. And we can see, um, I guess I got to reset my zoom here. Uh, let me just do this quick. Zoom. There we go. Now we can. Now we're a little better. Sorry. Um, and what do we see here? Well, we're seeing radiation levels. Notice the scale of analysis is pretty coarse. So first things first. Let's set our grid scale a little tighter. Let's say. Let's say for for the calculation here. Let's say 0.2. I'm just going to say 0.2 for the grid scale. So 0.2, um, 200 millimeters to a side. Notice that that we get a much tighter grid there. We could go even a little less than that. This is calculating pretty quickly. It's only taking a second or two to to calculate. That'll probably double or triple the calculation, but um, that's all right. So um, and what we'll see though is is when we really tighten up the grid 
grid scale there, we're going to see a lot more information. So you can see we're getting some good shading along the top of this window, but then the bottom is pretty unshaded. Uh, you're sort of seeing the same thing here with some shading around the edges. And then obviously things like the east and west and north are much more shaded uh, than the south. Although I should say, I should note, these are radiation levels. What we're seeing here are uh, is um, uh, radiation over, in this case, the winter period. We could also look at the summer period here. So, you know, different periods um, are going to have different total radiation levels. I should note that the color scale has been um, automatically adjusted so that it is the same for both the winter and summer. Um, so that's going to sort of auto auto scale uh, to work for both of those time periods there uh, in this particular case. So, okay, so we're getting radiation information. So that's neat, that's useful. We can use that to make all sorts of, um, all sorts of useful um, evaluations. For instance, uh, right now, we're not taking into account any additional shading elements. So what about all of our, like, um, you know, the roof and our little horizontal overhang and our neighbor? Let's add those into this additional shading surfaces and let's really see what kind of, um, what kind of information uh, we get then. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to grab my, um, these were my additional shading objects. Remember we used these in the last solver. Uh, so let me turn these back on uh, just so you can just remember, right? We had a, a sort of neighboring building to the south. We had a roof there and then we had our little um, horizontal overhang. So let's, um, let's see what happens when we input those as additional shading surfaces here. Uh, so obviously that's going to increase our um, uh, complexity, the complexity of our shading scene. And so we're going to get quite a bit, quite a, a different set of radiation results now, um, thanks to all of those shading elements, right? All of a sudden our, our south shading here is a very different situation. You can almost see that neighboring building um, you know, reflected here uh, as a, as a, uh, and its impact on our, um, on our, our window shading here. So, okay, so that seems like it's all working pretty well. Um, obviously, you can sort of dial that in to your heart's uh, content. Um, and one thing I should note, if you're ever having trouble with this component, if it's if it's giving you some results that don't seem quite right, one of the things that you can do to sort of bump up the resolution is for the shading uh, mesh settings. Um, if you come into your um, honeybee, or excuse me, your typical grasshopper, and you go to mesh, and go to utilities and use um, uh, quality. So settings quality. This is a you don't you don't input anything here. This is just a batch of settings for how meshes get created. You can use this high quality setting for the mesh, and that will increase the resolution of the uh, shading mesh, which is which is generated by default. It uses a relatively coarse one. It doesn't increase the calculation that much. But if you're ever getting kind of funny results, the first thing I would try would be use a use a higher resolution mesh setting here by just using again going to utilities and using a high quality mesh rather than the default. The default is a, you know, a, a fast mesh. Um, so just the number of subdivisions and that kind of thing. So, okay. Uh, anyway, so we're getting some good results here, but what are we supposed to make of all this? This is radiation. It's not shading factors. How do we use this to calculate shading factors for our project? Well, shading factors are relatively straightforward. The shading factor, as we talked about in our previous videos, it's just a numerical representation of how much radiation is falling on a window surface relative to its potential maximum. So if 100% is a completely unshaded window, and zero is a completely shaded window, most windows are going to be somewhere in between zero and 100 or zero and one. And if we have radiation information for the shaded condition of each window and the unshaded condition of each window, well, to calculate a shading factor is as easy as just using a division and dividing the shaded radiation by the unshaded radiation. And in this case, I'll get a series of shading factors. And if we want, we can flatten that just for purposes here. Notice we're getting a bunch of values, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, right? A whole bunch of numbers in between 0 and 1. 
70 to 80 percent shaded on most of our surfaces here. Now we could do the same thing for our summer radiation. So I'll just use a simple division, division component. And I'll just take one and then the next. And there we go. So now we have our summer radiation shading factors, or excuse me, our summer shading factors and our winter shading factors. Now, what are we going to do with these, though? How, how are we going to apply these to the model? So this component, to be clear, this component just calculates radiation. That's all this does. We need to then calculate the shading factors and then apply the shading factors to our honeybee model somehow. And we're going to use a special component to do that. So I'm going to come up to now Passivow's Tools, come to O1 Model, come down to this Apply Window Shading Factors and drop that onto the canvas here. And notice what does this take? It takes uh, the honeybee rooms, a list of the window names, a list of the window wintertime shading factors, a list of the summertime window shading factors. So we can take the honeybee rooms, connect the honeybee rooms to the honeybee rooms, we'll take in the list of window names, and then take our winter shading factors and our summer shading factors. And as soon as all the information has been passed through, this component will go off and add those shading factors to each of the windows in the honeybee room, or rooms in this case. In order to pass that along to the rest of the model, all I need to do is take this output honeybee rooms and then feed it along to the next link in the chain. In this case, it'll be this create vent systems right here. Right, so this is a whole alternative workflow for our shading. So let's find a place to put this. Let me do it this way, I guess. Let's do this, and we'll make a bunch of room here. And then we'll put this sort of here. Do we want this one anymore? I guess I'll, I'm going to go ahead and just, well, yeah, I'll, I'll just put it up here, I guess, for now. Maybe I'll delete it out of this example. I'll just delete it out. If you, you can go back and watch the video if you want to bring it back in. That's fine. Um, you can do it that way. I'm just going to delete it out. And um, where do we want to put this stuff? I guess we'll put this up here. As I said, this is a bit spaghetti for my taste. There's a lot of components here. I'm not really sure the best way to organize all this stuff. Um, anyway, there we go. There's all our pieces. And now we've got our honeybee rooms output. And we take the honeybee rooms output and we feed it into the next honeybee rooms input, the next link in the chain that gets passed all the way along. And then all this data, which is calculated here by this, by this method, is then going to flow off to our PHPP. So let's boot up our PHPP and let's see what kind of results we get now in this new case. Okay, everything's booted up, everything's flowed out to our PHPP. So let's take a look at our PHPP. So come to our PHPP, come to the shading worksheet. And so we're in our shading worksheet. We have our list of our windows. I'm going to go ahead and hide these again because they are unnecessary right now. And let's take a look at what we have here. So we have our list of windows. Remember in our last couple of videos, we were looking at how we were feeding data into this portion of the PHPP. We were adding direct dimensions into the shading solver here. In this case, now that we're using this alternative method, we are no longer inputting dim dimensional information. We're not solving for dimensions at all. That's not something that's being calculated in this, um, this alternative version. Instead, we're calculating shading factors directly. And so notice over here, we have those shading factors being input directly into our model. So these factors for winter, and then for summer are going to flow directly into the rest of the model. And you can see here we're getting values anywhere from 54% to 85%, uh, I guess, at the highest, 89% here uh, in the summertime, so maybe 39% at the lowest. So we're getting a you know, good diversity of shading factors here, or an interesting diversity here of, of shading factors. Um, and then obviously this would flow through the rest of the model. So this is all working. All of our shading factors are coming in. And as you saw, this is um, quite, a, quite a bit faster of a method. So the actual calculation here um, executes quite a bit faster, uh, especially with large complex models. If you have large urban scenes and um, if you have you know, more detailed shading, uh, shading methods or shading um, 
objects, uh, I think this method will probably do a much better job for you. And then of course you also have the added benefit of sort of having all of the uh, you know typical ladybug visualizations for things like visualizing the outputs. You know you can use the typical ladybug legend parameters inputs here to control the visual styling, the colors, and the labeling, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, that that all uh, that all works. Of course you can you know output things like the you know the the overall legend, uh, you know the legend scale, all of that kind of stuff, right? So that'll all that'll all come out as well. Um, so that's good. This is useful. I guess the co there are a couple caveats about this method before we finish. I know this was a long video, but a couple caveats here. Number one, uh, let's just go to the ladybug tools for a second. Go to ladybug. Where's ladybug? Everything moves around. There, ladybug. Uh, so analyze data and the incident radiation. And let's just read this for a second here. Um, and I think the bottom note there is really important for us to understand if we're going to use this method. Um, the ladybug folks here are saying that no reflections are included in this analysis and that this is really important to bear in mind. Also that this component uses the CAD environments ray intersection methods which can be fast for geometries with low complexity, but does not scale well for complex geometries or many test points, okay? So that's important for us to understand that there are some sort of boundaries or limits on when this type of method is useful uh, for the types of geometry that we're, we're working on. Notice also the very last sentence there, for really complex cases, uh, where reflection or really detailed shading geometry are present, um, the honeybee radiance method should be used. So just to point out that this uh, ladybug in, uh, incident radiation method is the one that we're implementing in the solver here. There's a whole additional method that, that can be, could be used to calculate solar radiation, which is the honeybee radiance method over here. This could also be used to effectively calculate radiation and probably do a more sophisticated job, especially when you get into things like transparencies or screens or really detailed objects, that kind of thing. We have not yet figured out a method, a, a way to um, easily use the radiance method here, um, sort of encapsulated in one component. But, uh, you know, we're thinking about it. Um, and so anyway, this, we don't have one yet, but you know, you could, you could make up your own workflow. Remember the goal is just to get radiation in a shaded and an unshaded condition. And then you can feed them into this apply window shading uh, uh, factors component using whatever method you want. So I should also say, if you want to use some different tool, if you want to use Diva or you want to use you know any other tool, you can use this um, apply window shading factors to sort of take calculated shading factors from any tool and apply them to your Honeybee or rather your PHPP model in this case. So that's one caveat. You know, there's probably some limitations to this. There might even there might be some better ways to do it with certain types of geometry, for sure. Um, so you know, that's important to keep in mind. The other thing to keep in mind about this method is that no one um, on the PHPP certification side has ever reviewed or approved this method. So if you're trying to work on a certified Passive House project, keep in mind that this method may cause you trouble. It may not. Your certifier may think it's totally fine, but they may also kick up a fuss about it because it's not an approved method. It wasn't a method which was created by PHI. Uh, they haven't reviewed these calculations, uh, anything like that. Um, so, you know, you might, you might run into some trouble there if you want to try and use this for a certified project. So I think it works good. I think it's a good process. I like the ladybug radiation solver. I think it's fast and effective. I think you get good visualizations and it's useful for getting good feedback and helping drive design. Um, but again, for certified Passive House projects, put an asterisk next to it. They might force you to go back to the older method of doing those dimensional inputs because that one is you know, verified and approved. Um, so just keep that in mind, um, you know, lots of ways to do this type of work and uh, lots of different methods. Um, there's probably a lot of work to be done on this front. Um, you'll notice here there's a lot of things missing. Um, you know, I, I referenced trees, but we don't have a good method for doing trees currently. Um, so I think there's a lot of development work yet to be done on this front. A lot of verification, uh, a lot of testing and analysis, and then a lot of development of new components and new tools to help us all develop these um, these shading factors in a more efficient, more effective, easier, easier manner, uh, for sure.
So there's two methods. You can choose any of those two for now, and hopefully in the future we might even have some more available, which would be which would be good. But in any event, all of this is now flowing through into our PHPP project. You should have a completed PHPP with good results across the board. We can now go in and begin to refine and edit our project, and uh, uh, be, you know, and try and uh, push it over the push it over the line and get it into that PassMouse certification range. So in future videos, we'll come back and we'll look at some of the other edge cases here. There are a few elements that we haven't really talked about yet. We haven't talked about the ground. We haven't talked about thermal bridges. And uh, of course, we haven't sort of pushed our building all the way uh, across the board into full PassFile certification range. So maybe we'll come back and we'll do some optimization and improvement videos as well. But um, as far as the bulk of the existing PassFile tools, Ladybug to PHPP workflow is concerned, we've gone over the core workflow elements here uh, and hopefully this gets, gives you enough information to sort of get up to speed and uh, get, get working with these tools. Uh, but like I said, we'll come back in future videos and keep adding uh, some, some other elements and um, keep updating these as we add new components.